Hello! Oh, yeah! <laughs> I'm here! Good morning! Good morning! Hello! Well, welcome to my kitchen. So, this is so exciting. I've got this a huge, great list of, of those of you who've joined Paleo Kitchen Parties. So, just to welcome you in, you obviously know who I am, but I'm Bika Sapien and I have been in the kitchen cookery school and I specialise in paleo keto cooking for health and life and I'm so thrilled to have you here. And I can see you popping up and actually if I refresh this, I've, thought I've got my um, um, my laptop here today because it's really, really lovely fun when I can see people coming in. Um, so do, I'll try and look, I mean, you, only of you who've watched me before know I'll get carried away, but I'll try and glance back down there just to see if there are any chats. So do put any questions in. Um, if you'd like to, all just say hello. It's really lovely to hear you say hello. Really, really lovely. But, so I'm here in my kitchen today. This time last week, we were in um, uh, Wales, mid Wales, with Dr. Sarah Myhill, as you will have seen. And I so said this whole release, really, so I want to say hello to Joe and Sean and Dina and Lisa and Catherine and Matthew and Sinead and Jane and Sarah and Angela and then Jono and Jane, hello from last week. I can see somebody popping up and saying hi. What is frustrating is that I can see you popping in um, over there, but I'm too short-sighted to see, you know, exactly what's going on. But um, who else? And Jane and yeah, Maddie, Sylvia, Sabina, um, and Nishka and Dawn, you've all come in in the last week, some of you, a lot of you in this last week or so, and just a really big welcome. I hope you really enjoy these. So this is where you get my paleo keto tips from my kitchen on a Saturday morning. It's related to what's going on in my head and my life, my garden and my fridges. And hopefully it's a little idea that will just see you through and get you, get you ahead of the game. And this morning, we're making we that's the royal we that is actually me today normally when i say we somebody else is doing something but i'm going to make a tarasalata because on our last lent lunch uh, last sunday there was the most gorgeous bowls of tarasalata on the on the table and um i was listening into sarah telling somebody how she made it oh it's just so easy you throw it in well it is so easy and um but you need to know um some tricks of the trade and also what is tarasalata where does it come from how is it made etc etc right i'm just going to swap that over for a nice damp chair cloth so um, also what I talked to you about on these is stuff that's come up that I think is relevant for us to be aware of. And yesterday, um, in a very human way, I was racing around. I've got a really lovely weekend this weekend, lots of entertaining people, old, old friends from when I was a shy girl, when I was 19, do the sums on that. Uh, coming for lunch which is really so two really lovely girlfriends who I haven't seen I don't think I've seen them since before I had kids that I mean we've done the Christmas card thing and been chatting 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 but um so that's gonna be really really, really fun so um lunch and then we've got friends for dinner which is really really lovely too so dinner I think is gonna be barbecue but the point is yesterday afternoon when mum was coming for tea and supper I was like okay well let's I have my sheet and my planning and I was at the butcher choosing bits of meat for various things. And then I, they didn't have the lamb neck fillet easily available. They could have made, done it, but I, I didn't have the time. So uh, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to take the easy option. And how often do we get caught out by taking the easy option? And I've also done it again. And I'm showing you here. What I want to point out here is that you should, you just have to not buy anything that's got any kind of glazing, flavouring or whatever on it, because this is where the problems start. Now, I wasn't, I was in, um, we've had a makeover on our Sainsbury's, so I was wandering around with my son the other day looking at, you know, all the new things. And I don't, I, I don't often go to a supermarket because it's easier to stay on the wagon if you don't, because you make better choices, because you think about them rather than getting succumbed. But anyway, I was, um, chatting with a lady we were both trying to find smoked mackerel and we found it hurrah and then i thought oh no she she picked up the the british hot smoked mackerel and i thought um but but with the mediterranean flavor and i thought oh that that could be nice i want one pack of the ordinary one and one pack of this one and after what happened last night i went to the fridge and i pulled it out and you know what yet again i've been pulled into it and it's it's so good for me to just sort of highlight it to you because this is where thing, if you're not managing to get 
your ketones down or read uh, that you're in ketosis, then this is the kind of thing that's going to push you over the edge. So this is, these are Mediterranean flavoured um, hot smoked mackerel. And I thought lovely to have a bit of a change and go down to the ingredients list, fish, salt, Mediterranean glaze, first ingredient, brown sugar, second ingredient, maltodextrin, another sugar. Why do we need the sugar? Now, last night I bought some um, minty flavoured um, lamb. I've got plenty of mint in the garden. I've got garlic, I've got amazing olive oil. I've got, I didn't need to do that, but it was just a, do you know what? Let's just give myself a little break. I've got, you know, mum coming and I want to have something for tea, da, 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 da. So I did that. Well, I grilled them and I set them for the normal amount of time, normal amount of grill. You know, I'm quite a competent chef, know what I'm doing. And then smell a bit of burning. And I think, what is going on there? It's the blinking sugar in the mint glaze. And it's just awful. And actually when we ate them, I thought, do you know what? It's not even that great. It really isn't that great. So just stick to the basics, you know, stick to the lamb chops. Um, we, we, I'll teach you how to do all the delicious things. Right, I've done my rant, over. Let's move on with the most divine tarot slater. Right, now did you did you know uh, what smoked cod's row looks like? I bought that whole piece, so it would have come up like this. Um, but cod's row is literally the, the whole cod's row, hot smoked. And it's divine. Now you don't need very much, but of course I'm like a you know child in a sweet shop. Well, maybe not a child in a sweet shop these days. But um, I just have to buy the whole whole thing because I just want to have it. It freezes really, really well, and sometimes you can't get hold of it. So always have some in your freezer. Now, when you buy this from a supermarket, it's pink. It's little girl pink, and um, and it's very smooth. And that is not the traditional thing. If you get something called Tarant Slater from, I know, a lovely Osan Deli, and it's a pale, creamy colour with a tinge of slightly orangey, you know, creamy. I mean, pink is just not the, you know. This is brown, browny, orangey, coral, coral, that's a good colour. Then that is the real thing, you know. Um, commercial um, products just have pink dye in them, okay, cochineal. So, um, that's the starting point. Now, what we have to do to begin with is actually peel the skin off. And you can either just peel it off like this, or sometimes what I actually do is cut it in half and then just open it out and then get a spoon. Because it's quite sticky stuff. Now, a food processor is required. Um, and then you can just scrape it out. The guy looked at me when I wanted to buy the whole thing. Oh, oh dear, he doesn't know me very well. Um, he doesn't know me very well. But anyway, it's very nice that we have got a local fishmonger that I could go to because they are rare. Now, you can buy this online. And I know that's what Sarah does. She buys it online. And don't be shocked. Um, it's about 30, 38 pounds a kilo. Now, just remember, if you're British, you've probably been working in pounds a lot of your life. So immediately half that price. 38, 115, 16, 17, 17 pounds a pound. That's sort of just a bit easier on, easier on the brain on the Saturday morning. Oh dear. Now, Jono and Jane, if you're there, Jono, I think you might be doing kids stuff, but Jane, if you're there, a big hello. And um, Jane, we were round the table. I hope you were enjoying. Jane, Jane, Jane was the queen. She was the winner of the ketone test. Jane is doing an amazing job. Um, and getting into ketosis. And Sarah Meinl has a fantastic new machine. It is the gold standard of, of breath test machines. It costs 200 quid. So we won't all be having them in our kitchen. However, for her purposes, it's absolutely brilliant. And in fact, um, in fact, in the long run, it is, it is the one to get because I've got the keto mojo, but of course you have to keep on buying the little test strips were expensive, but I will get a blood a glucose reading, which is something that I want to have at the moment. And um, you don't get that when you're on the breath meter. But when you're, you know, on a roll and you're doing a good job and you're just doing a check-in, then that is a really, really good thing to have. Right, okay. So I've scraped that, um, the sticky row out and thrown the skin away. Now, um, it's like 
it's a bit like making mayonnaise. You know, you're going to make much volume from the base, the base camp, and it's strong. So you don't want to use that. I'm going to put that in the freezer um, for another day. Now I will wash my hands. I need to chat to you about the other things that I've got on my tray here, which are very exciting. So we're going to have some garlic in there because we do. And Sarah just chucks a whole onion in. Now, typically, um, tarama salata is made with bread and you get sort of yesterday's bread and you stick it under a cold tap or under a tap and you sort of rinse it out with the water and that provides some stability for the um for the for the emulsion it's going to become a bit like an emulsion so it's a bit like mayonnaise now um to date what i have done in a gluten-free way is that i've used ground almonds which are absolutely brilliant you know it's more protein etc but we do have to be aware that they've got carbohydrate in them so um i'm going to um not use them this morning we're going to do it on the sarah's the sarah version i'm going to stick in a whole onion super easy nice white onion and we're going to have a little play and get it right and get it and if I want to put some ground arms in because I feel it needs it for the stability then I can do that but I'll just quarter that up good old Maggi mix love my Maggi mix I took my Vitamix with them last weekend and I know they have gone up in price so perhaps I am coming around to think that you know if you don't have a Maggi mix and you don't have a Vitamix then maybe you do need to think about for the long term a Thermomix so um, Morag was our lovely friend she sells them um, these are, they are amazing pieces of kit um, and they are hugely expensive but you know it's about having one piece of kit that does everything so you know um, what can I say now I'm going to put in an egg yolk here because it's a little bit like mayonnaise and that's what Sarah does so um, it's so good I mean eggs are good for you more protein in it goes right okay what we also definitely going to need is some lemon juice actually this is a juicy large lemon Put a shout out to my lovely local greengrocers, Leighton's. Now, Leighton's is an amazing local greengrocer to me, up at the top of Bookham High Street, for those of you in Surrey. Um, he's not organic, but do you know what? They are so lovely there, and the quality of the food is, is, food fresh, is so good. You just feel organic. So happiness has got to come into it, and Silka... I don't know whether she's going to watch Silk Boys with us, and she gave us, did an amazing lecture on happiness. And I'm blaming Silka for the fact that I'm going to be creating um, for my Duke of Edinburgh students um, a course which it, it goes completely against the Paleo Keto grain. It completely, it couldn't be worse in fact. But it's going to be make me very happy, and it's going to tick a box. And I hardly even dare tell you what it is, but I think you're going to like it for all the wrong reasons. I'm doing a course for my teenagers called Cakes for Cash. Oh my goodness, because, because, hear me out, because when you need to make money, you will all know that the school or the cake sale is the instant winner, okay? So, I also think that every person, every teenager should be able to make their favourite adult, <laughs> it might not be their mother or their father, but their favourite adult or a special person or a special friend, a cake. Now, I know I want to wean us out of cakes for celebrations and I am doing that, but it is deep in our tradition and therefore, rather than them going and making something, buying something commercial, which, you know, if I'm going to have sugar, I'd like to know what sugar it is. Then I'm going to teach them this cake. So this, this course is, is, is going to be called Cakes for Cash, and it's going to have 12 recipes in it. Brilliant, brilliant recipes that are executed with ease, will look fantastic on a cake sale table, and will sell out immediately. And they will be made with easy ingredients that you can pick up from your local store. And um, anyway, so last, yesterday afternoon, I had um, an experiment for one of them, and um, and it, I was teased mostly. I was actually one of the recipes. It's for a bit of fun. Is I thought I might have a sort of variation. Because thinking about if you were doing a few recipes and you want your cake table to look look. I mean, why I'm talking about you about cake on a Saturday morning is beyond me. But anyway, I'm going to finish. 
Um, so I was testing um, my version of Yorkshire Fat Rascals. Well, um, I think they were very successful, but a Yorkshire Fat Rascal is like a giant, um, a giant rock cake, rock bun. And it has two eyes and some scary teeth, but the eyes were all over the place and the teeth were all over the place. But it made us all laugh. And I was happy because of that. And Mum was happy and Rory... Mark was happy and Josie was happy. Then Mark's brother and sister up in York, they were happy because they laughed at the pictures. So you know what? Happiness makes you well. I know that. I absolutely know that. And so we've got to get these right things. Um, of course, having eaten the Yorkshire at Rascal, then um, hormonally and chaotically, I did wake up with hot sweats because, you know, that's what happens. But Right, should we get back to this um, paramasalata? So, a refresher. We've got onion in there, we've got um, garlic, egg yolk, and we've got the base. Now, the next thing comes onto oil. Oh, and I grow it. Now, I've got my gorgeous youngest son back from um, Bristol um, this week, and he had so much stuff from his flat, and of course, the old, there are vegetable oil and the um, Asda extra virgin olive oil. Well, students have to work in a certain way, but. Ugh. When you are making um, something like this, you know, oil, these um, vegetable oils, ordinary sunflower oils, they are just full of, it's hydrogen, it's just oil, it's bad for you. So it's just horrendous for you. So um, I, that's what I want to wean you out of, those kind of oils. But it might be, this is, this is really terrible. I, if I've got it in the house, it might be I use a bit of that just to get rid of it mixed with a good olive oil because it's going to go to my lovely guests and they it's it's still going to be so much better than um buying a bought product and they won't know that's terrible oh my goodness they might know they might be watching right let me put this on okay we're on we're on here we go right spatula Scrape it down, and then of course we're going to need lots of black pepper in this. Salt, hold back on the salt because um, smoked food is salty. All right. Okay. Right. Let's now. Typically, if you can get hold of a good quality light olive oil, then that is a perfect thing because a little bit of the flavour of olive oil, but it's not too overpowering. So I'm going to do a mixture of things here. I've got my amazing olive oils. My really pure um, extra virgin olive oil. I'm going to need more of that, Kelly. Um, and then I've got the, the next grade down, sort of everyday, really good quality um, artisan olive oil I cook with. But, you know, we're just going to go with these today because I need them out of my cupboard. So it's like making mayonnaise. Um, I've done a lot of teaching about mayonnaise. It's a pulse. Just... Just add a bit and get it going, all right? I mean, this is so easy. It's not like making egg, egg mayonnaise where you just have one egg yolk and you've just got to really concentrate. You know, there's a whole great base here. a year I would deep fry and deep fry was is was always around Christmas and the kids loved some uh, prawns in filo pastry that I could get from my fish supplier and so it was a once a year thing and then I realized that actually the prawns were the, they weren't around and you know the prawns were still in the freezer you know come Easter time so I stopped that but the point was deep frying was a once a year thing and I used to do it in the utility room and so the oil I would because it had only been used once I'd keep and I would put back in this on the top shelf and once I came to make something like this and I used the oil that had been used once before to get rid of it, thinking that it was just an ordinary one. Oh my goodness, it was disgusting. So um, just, just get rid of it with your garbage. Just don't deep fry. Get yourself an air fryer. Right, so you've just got, let's have a look and see what's going on because, um, did I put the lemon juice in? Yeah, I 
yeah, I think I did. Um, you just have to keep going until it thickens up and um, and it will go runny. Right, I'm going to come around to the camera so, so you can all see this. At the moment, there's a video camera, it's really runny. Okay, so, well, it's not really, really runny, but you just got to keep going with the oil. I mean, this is, this is the good thing about making something like this because you know what goes into it. And when you're loving it, lapping it up as I do, you can just know that what you're lapping up is a lot of oil and not much cod throw. Right, off we go again. Right, it's just starting to thicken up now. Now this would be why, for me, I would be then using ground almonds. You know, you could go down the gluten-free bread route if you're making just ham salata rinsed with water because that will thicken it up. But of course, this is all carbs. So we're doing paleo keto. We are not going down that route. We are better to have really good quality oil in us. Forgive this, what's going on here. Um, um, because we will feel full really quickly and it's doing amazing things for us, okay? So, um, right. This is starting to get there. Right, here we go. Um, yeah, it's getting there, it's getting there, but we want to take it a bit further because what we're going to do towards the end is, is that we're going to add a splash of water and that's going to lighten it up and whiten it up. Now at this point, a bit of tasting required because I need to know whether I'm going to add more olive oil or ordinary oil or whatever it is I'm going to add. Mm. Oh, yum. Yum. It's good news. I'm not overpowering on the olive oil, so I'm going to keep going on that bit. really let's come, come back to you really really nice um there you go guys and the video there we go um really really nice and thick 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 you know it's got to be thick as a dip so you've got it's got to sit on a cracker it's got to sit on a crudite okay i'm going to carry on just a tiny bit more This one again so it's really quite good and brittle now yeah really really good oh just want to get rid of that oil don't want to okay really really brittle now excellent okay so really really thick now, now is the point where I'm going to add, I will just have a little taste again, but you know, I have got in there, not far off a liter of oil. Okay, so that is what is in taramasalata. Okay, so it's very important that we all know that. So I make my DV students when they're doing their starting off course, I get them to make mayonnaise because I want them to know going forward, you know, it might not register on, their, on the front of their brains, but it'll be there in due course. <laughs> Yum. Right. So, splash of water. I think we might have some more lemon. I've got lots of lovely lemons yesterday. You could use lime as well. Very we good. And then <laughs> I've got some of my mother's overgrown radishes to serve with. Some bit more black pepper. Now, so when the water goes in, it's just going to lighten the whole thing up and make it... Um, I think we are there. We are absolutely there. Right. That is 
gorgeous let me come round okay so there we go really i'm not sure whether it's um let me look at you in the right place <laughs> um that is how to make tarama starter that's how to make it paleo keto friendly so we've got a lovely whole onion in you can get carried away but bigger onion in, more onion, onion if you like we've got the oil we've got lemon juice and we've got garlic so we haven't got any bread and we haven't got any um, ground almonds which i have used instead of bread historically but again that's the carb load so hopefully you will um you will enjoy that right oh i've got a big mess here so let's clear that up now the only other thing i just wanted to um um chat about today let me just clear this up i think i'm nearly there i've chatted for half an hour what came to my life yes you know you've got to face the music i have to face the music while i've been away and with the dry weather the veggies or the salads in my and the and the the let the spinach and actually do you know what i didn't see any spinach in sarah's veg garden and maybe this is why because it's a pain in the neck because it's bolted and now my veg plants are kind of overrun with flowering sal flowering salad leaves and over overdone <laughs> sprouting overdone bolted um spinach which is really really annoying and so the point is i need to face the music go and get it out and replant some other things um and manage it a bit more because i'm going to be here for a while now um because you can't eat you know bolted uh, bolted spinach is not a good thing so maybe i just need to stick to the kale goodness knows but spinach is so lovely isn't it spinach is so lovely right so that is that face the music get into your veg gardens and sort them out and then make sure while you're in the mix that you pick your radishes overgrown radishes are not a good thing my mum's lovely carer brought to yesterday and she handed me this bag over oh, that looks just looks like rude that's a kind of bottom um they are woody and horrible and actually this one i've got oh my god it's just brown and disgusting so you know these are these are going to go straight to the compost so deal with it i know i've got some turnips out there which i never wanted anyway which should probably go off but i've also got some cold rub out which is fun and also what well, adam she's been in the philippines brought me back with some pure cacao absolutely pure cacao so this is amazing now and that brings me on and, and that is the kind of thing that you can put into your chilies um for extra flavor you know ca cocoa the pure cocoa um they do they do cacao ceremonies i haven't been to one so i don't quite know what they're doing them off the, slightly off the wall but um healing very healing so i've got my supply of cacao so i'm going to work out what to do with it now what this brings me back to is that if you've got my newsletter um, you will have heard about this um, yesterday, but to say off the back of being with Sarah Minehill and with all the gorgeous people I was with last weekend, I realised I needed to quickly step up and create our, uh, an essential um, an essential live course. And so I've worked it out. I've got an, the name I was struggling on, but it's a live cooker, Paleo Keto cookery course. Paleo Keto Start, Succeed, Smile. Okay, because it's really important when you get going that you succeed and you know how to succeed so i'm going to do it starting in a month's time thursday the 18th of july it's going to be at 8 p.m and of course if you it's going to run for, for an hour or so it'll be about an hour of demonstrating and then there'll be live chat um and you'll be able to ask as many questions as you like and i'll just keep answering until we get to the end so it'll be at 8 p.m uk time but that is sort of fairly suitable around the world um what model is going to last be over six weeks okay because you need the progression over six weeks to get used to it to be able to ask the questions to understand the pitfalls and the ways around them okay so i'm going to give you during this six weeks i'm going to give you recipes that you're going to be able to make and bulk up on so that every time you make something you've made a bit extra for the freezer or the store cupboard so by the time you get to the six end of the six weeks you're going to be in a really really good place to be able to keep going and doing it um doing it yourself and understand how easy it is once you've just got the things in place and i I'm, i know that this is going to be really really helpful so we're going to have the inaugural one coming now i've got to create the sales page so i've just put out um on my newsletter but I've just, if you're interested please just send me um a message and then a, a, anyone who signs up that they're interested I'll get the um, the course information to you as quickly and there will be an early bird. I know it's all coming, but, you know, it's the first one I'm doing. So I'm really happy to 
um, give some really great value to anyone that wants to throw throw in the towel, throw in the towel, throw in the throw, throw themselves into my live kitchen and try that. So I'm really excited about that. And then of course that will be the great lead up to Sarah actually being here in my kitchen in October. And I've just I say it's going to be a really lovely exclusive. Um, a special VIP event. You're going to love being here. Um, um, it's. I know my clients historically have really loved the events here, and um, and we're just in a whole new league now and a whole whole new stage. And I, and I'm so excited. So that's 10th of October. Again, you can just register interest interest in that if you like to. But the um, sales page is open, and there's an early bird rate on that as well until August. So have a think. But that again can be um, a live Zoom event for you as well if you can't get to my kitchen. So that's that. Um, and of course, just keep coming and joining me on a Saturday here so um we had a chat last weekend about the timing because eight o'clock isn't as you know i was delighted to try it for a while but actually it's not such a good time in this house anymore and so i have a chat and last weekend we agreed that actually going back to the 11 a.m slot was going to be good but um i'm at a wedding next weekend so i'm going to start that from july coming back to 11 a.m and i really hope that will be a more interactive time for many of you because it's so nice to know who's there and who i can chat to i'll have a quick i've got to work out the system i'll see if i can see if anybody has anybody's there oh where are we goodness knows no there we go i think somebody's watching me and my technology. Anyway, over and out. Have a great week. Love your Tower of Sonata. I say you can order online or get it from your local fishmonger. And um, I hope you have a wonderful weekend and really, really enjoy it. All right. Lots of love, everybody. Bye.